Is that man manipulation? Mm -hmm. Being manipulated? Yeah. Well, I heard disengaged students as a huge, right? That came up over and over again in your wonders. No dialogue. Desire. No desire. From who? Anybody? From like, students there's no desire. Like, students can be, it's like that. <laughs> Like they could, they can say all they want. You know, I want change, but actions speak louder than words. What's at the center? We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, What's at the center? Is <laughs> um, the system working against us? Pretty bleak picture, isn't it? I mean, look at what, look at what we're up against. I don't think we go any lower. We can't go any lower. We hit bottom. Yeah. So now we're going to, this, this is our realm of concern. And it is enormous. What's our realm of influence? What do we have influence over that might be able to impact on all of these concerns? What's within your, looking into yourself, what's within your realm of influence? I'm going to use my on this because it's for the individuals. Not, it's not me. My attitude. What do we have influence over? What do we have influence over? Our relationships with teachers. Huge. Or just our relationships in general. Yes. What resources do you have to use to influence the situation? Friends. Absolutely. Your, your team, right? Your friends. Mm -hmm. So this, I'm borrowing from Stephen Covey's work. It's from his first chapter of the Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And it's the chapter on uh, pro being proactive rather than reactive. Okay? And, and what, what he suggests is that the more time we spend thinking about, paying attention to, giving energy to, all of our concerns, I'll remind you of some of them, we won't get the change that's needed. That um, I can't read it. Um, that we, there's not the desire. There's not the, the lack of integrity of what adults say they want, what they're willing to do. That we have disengaged students. That we have no support. That it's not sustainable. That we hit bottom. There's no dialogue. There's lack of time. There's lack of follow through. The more time we spend in this world of lacks, of scarcity, of concern, two things happen simultaneously. Our realm of concern grows, and our realm of influence shrinks. <coughs> See, lots of nodding. <coughs> why would that be true? Why would that happen? Because it's easier to focus on negative things than it is positive. Yeah. So like you're probably a lot quicker to find out like the negative things about someone or something than you are to think of the positive things. It's like a black hole. Isn't it? it sucks, neg it, not only does it suck your own energy, but it attracts other negative energy. And it's like, it's almost like easier to just be like, just to almost give up. So like, <coughs> okay, there's nothing I can do, and it takes more work to right. be like, this can change. Right. And as soon as you give up, your influence becomes almost zero. Right? How else does it in de decrease your realm of influence? I'm going to call that the ethical or moral imperative. <coughs> that the alternative is so depressing and so black and so draining that we have no choice. It's an imperative that we do something about it. Okay. So let me lighten, let me lighten the, the room a little bit by saying the, uh, the inverse of this message is equally true. The more t time and energy we put into our Yahtzee work, being motivational to others, um, tapping our relationships with teachers and peers to move the work, uh, the stronger our desire is to make the change, and devote the time and energy to it, tapping your friends, the level of effort again, recognizing this is more than just something you want, that it's a moral and ethical imperative, that your own sense of responsibility makes a difference, that my team can really make a difference, um, how I present myself, my own organization skills, 
on my own attitude and my family, all of these resources, the more time we focus and use these things, I'm suggesting, from Covey's thinking, that our realm of influence grows exponentially and our realm of concern shrinks inversely. How, how can that be true? The time that we're putting into our concerns is coming from what we might be doing positive and to influence change. Why else? It's because as you um, get more motivated and start taking more risks, as soon as you overcome that, it's another check mm -hmm. off the list, and you're expanding. Suddenly, so you get to that behind you. There's no longer a worry. Right. As you apply your influence to different aspects of concern, you make a dent in that concern. You make a dent in the next concern. You make a dent in the next concern. You bring more people in. You bring more resources in. Yeah. Other ideas. You'll just feel more comfortable if you start focusing on all your influences and happy thoughts. You'll just feel, feel like things are possible and things can get done. And who will you attract to you when you're in that place? Um, people who are inspired by Absolutely. your motivation. Absolutely. That's a, and you remember we talked about how we inspire? When we, be, when we come from our own influence, <coughs> we inspire other, others. Who do we attract when we're in this realm of concern? More negative people. Oh my God! All of the bitching and groaning and groaning and this sucks. And we can't do anything. Or we're powerless. Just like if you are really having fun in your meetings and you're but you're still focusing on like on this taking anything, then it'll def word will definitely spread. I mean, teenagers especially talk crazy, and so but if, if word spreads, if word spreads, and then you get more people to join, it's like the best.